But this year's recipient is a true treasure here, and it's Eric Bransby, who's with us today. Eric. Uh, we, uh, uh, first an anecdote, uh, a little view into the past. I can't compete with that video, but uh, anyway, uh, a little peek into the past. My wife and small daughter uh, came here, and myself, uh, right after World War II, uh, prior to World War II, we had been uh, studying under Thomas Hart Benton, a very famous American painter, uh, one of what they called the Midwestern Trinity. Uh, he and Robinson, who, were, who was head of the school here, uh, was, uh, they were very good buddies in New York. Uh, uh, Mike Robinson uh, did political cartoons and illustrated uh, limited editions and great books and so forth. And uh, they both taught at the Art Students League in New York. Uh, so, uh, in any event, we studied with uh, with Benton, very mannered uh, in his uh, work and so forth. Uh, I can recall that uh, uh, they both spoke about uh, uh, Benton had uh, a place on Martha's Vineyard, and uh, uh, he went. Uh, Robinson joined him. The Robinson and Sally Robinson joined him for one summer out there, and they spent most of the summer overturning outhouses at night. The <laughs> vineyard was really uh, very sparsely settled. So uh, in any event, uh, and I guess the, uh, the little recollection that I can give you was simply that uh, uh, Colorado Springs was indeed, as Jim Rotten had said, a Garden of Eden as we remember it. It just uh, uh, compared with the big city and, and a very detached uh, art program, although programs then were classical based on European uh, models uh, as far as art schools were concerned. Uh, Colorado Springs had also been uh, an artist destination in the sense of uh, what we called artist colonies, uh, such as uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the several of the uh, Massachusetts coast. Uh, uh, there was also a colony as we know it in Taos and Santa Fe, uh, but it was a destination for mature artists to come in and uh, to live in, and, uh, in an environment that had uh, great uh, possibilities as far as uh, nature was concerned and so forth. So, forth. so I had heard that Mike Robinson was a, a, a very good figurative man and I was going in that direction, and that also uh, he was uh, uh, he was a great mural painter, and I was very much uh, taken with the mural uh, media uh, during my years with Tom Benton. Uh, Benton had done murals in New York for uh, for the uh, Whitney Museum, and uh, uh, Robinson in turn had. Uh, done the Kaufman murals, which are now the property of this uh, uh, institution. Uh, Kaufman in Pittsburgh, who eventually, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright worked uh, built his house, Falling Water, in Pennsylvania, and eventually the Kaufman family uh, were involved in the arts, including the putting together of, of the um, Museum of Modern Art in New York, uh, one of the first directors. Uh, so uh, they had certain things in common. And I wanted to go where there was a, a strong mural painter. Uh, we, uh, in any event, uh, the little anecdote to start out with, and I'll try not to speak too long because uh, it's hard to turn me off at times. <laughs> but uh, in any event, uh, uh, we came here, and of course, uh, drawing was the basic discipline. And every morning for three hours, for four years, uh, you would be uh, engaged in figure drawing. If you could master the figure, you could master the landscape, etc. And so my father came to visit uh, the right Reverend C. Carson Bransby and he decided to do what we would do. He'd come and associate with us. And the art school here was on the north side of the, uh, on the north side of, of the uh, open space uh, in the uh, building. And, uh, so he brought his books of theology and, and uh, philosophy. I sat out by a little pool that used to be out there in the center, and there was an apple tree off to the left. The, uh, left. Well, came break time, 
uh, students ran out into the open air. And finally, the model, who was very uninhibited, a little bit on the corpulent side, uh, rushed out. Uh, she had no inhibitions whatsoever. She shinnied up the apple tree and started to throw apples at my father, <laughs> who looked up from his books incredulously. And he didn't crack a smile or, or show any particular action. Uh, but I'm sure that what crossed his mind was the Garden of Eden. <laughs> The only thing not there was a snake. And so, uh, in any event, he became accustomed to the fact that uh, his son uh, would probably be drawing naked ladies periodically and, and so forth. So, um, as part of the game. So again, a little view of the past. This was the Broadmoor Academy. Uh, we were delighted to be here. Uh, almost all the students came across from the United States. They came to study under Mike Robinson or perhaps one of the other prominent teachers that was here. And uh, it was a, a fairly small school uh, compared to the one in Kansas City uh, where one felt uh, somewhat detached uh, in a human sort of way. It was like a family. There was a great sense of family. Uh, we called uh, Robinson, Uncle Mike, and his wife is Aunt Sally. And periodically, they would do shows of illustrations from his books, uh, Spoon River Anthology, uh, the brothers, uh, whatever it is, in uh, Russia, uh, from the Russian people. Uh, and, uh, uh, he, and he would take the male parts, he'd show the slides, Sally would do the female parts. And it was, again, very much like a closed-in sort of family. And uh, it, uh, you felt very associated. We were taken down to the secretary, and the secretary, uh, Mrs. Howard, from the historic family here in Colorado Springs, and she was instructed that uh, on the GI Bill, as we were, that if we ran out of money at the end of the month, uh, she would have a small donation that she could give to us to get through the month. So, uh, uh, and we felt like uh, Jim Rotten has said that this is indeed a very special place. Uh, when, when I retired from the, uh, retired so-called, I had six murals on the books, and, uh, but when we retired from the University of Missouri, uh, she said, my wife said, well, I'm going back to Colorado Springs but Eric would prefer perhaps going back to Florence, Italy. And uh, uh, it was a little bit on my mind, but uh, it really was not an option. Uh, having spent some time in Europe uh, looking at uh, Renaissance murals and, and things of this sort. Uh, we had Lawrence Barrett, who was on the staff here, was one of the top three ranking printers, lithographic printers in the United States. Uh, he'd had a good, good time to uh, teach the process, and uh, uh, in any event, uh, we all worked in his studio. And artists would come out from New York, Adolf Dane, uh, other people, I think, uh, quite a list of names that would come here who were popular at the time. Uh, and you'd be working alongside uh, these people, uh, almost like peers. And uh, again, it was there was this sense of family, a great deal of warmth to it. Adolf Dane, I sat next to him working on a stone down in, uh, in Barrett's studio, Akuni Yoshi from New York. Uh, these names are not as famous now uh, because of the abstract uh, uh, movement in America. Her Herbert Beyer came down from Aspen, one of the Bauhaus masters, who I later was to work with. Uh, when uh, I had to take time out uh, leaving the University of Illinois uh, because of a very sick daughter. I brought her back here to get her on her feet. And uh, I worked uh, illustrating uh, his ideas for the academy, for new buildings and uh, particularly for a museum. Uh, Walt Kuhn, uh, Rico Lebrun, a great figurative painter from, uh, from uh, uh, the West Coast with the University of California system, Italian, uh, wonderful draftsman, uh, of which the Fine Art Center has inherited a number of pieces. Uh, he confided with Lawrence Barrett, 
he'd like to come here and teach. Uh, so many of those people uh, with this wonderful building, uh, which uh, within which we're sitting now, uh, attracted and and Colorado Springs attracted to uh, come here. Uh, of course, Jean Cholo did some of his uh, murals, his uh, prints here, uh, and of course uh, he succeeded uh, uh, Robinson uh, as the head of the art school, and eventually he uh, was able to get me uh, into Yale uh, to come under another Bauhaus master, Herbert Beyer. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Anyway, uh, under um, uh, one of the Bahamas masters who came to this country uh, fleeing from Hitler. And uh, he was a very strict man. Uh, as I like to say, uh, considering both Robinson, Benton, and uh, 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 the master at Yale, uh, I've been taken apart by some of the finest, uh, <laughs> uh, finest artists in, internationally that, uh, that anyone could be. Uh, this is required too. To, uh, to survive in the art game. Uh, Frank Mayshaw with his beautiful murals, uh, who I barely, uh, I, I could not uh, get a chance to meet him. He was still alive when I came. Had a heart attack, I think, at 45 years of age. And lots of beautiful horses, the fresco uh, on the walls of the uh, courtyard here. Uh, Gino uh, from, uh, uh, from, uh, the Columbia University uh, came here, Mangravidi, uh, very little Italian, uh, people in Colorado Springs, very fond of him, and, uh, and he was on my heavy committee, which uh, for young artists uh, I had for a year when we came back from uh, the University of Illinois. So it was a very intimate kind of place. And, uh, I, and again, it was very laid back. Uh, yeah, it wasn't so tightly organized as, say, the Art Students League or, or even the Kansas City Art Institute. Uh, this wonderful climate, uh, the, uh, uh, some time ago, the uh, director of the uh, Kirkman Museum in uh, Chicago, uh, in uh, Denver, uh, asked uh, one of the uh, female artists that he gave a show to in Denver a short time ago, and he said, uh, why is it that Colorado artists are so loopy and uh, surreal and somewhat on the loopy side? Uh, she said to him, it's simple. We're oxygen deprived. Uh, <laughs> and we all need to know that. So uh, in any event, uh, uh, we would have many artists come and visit. And uh, it was a first one-on-one -on -one kind of experience a great one for all of us. Uh, the uh, Percy Hagerman, uh, who was ch uh, chairman of the board, uh, uh, for whom Hagerman Peak is called, is uh, given its name, uh, at least for his family. His father was a railroad builder, Colorado and Midland, and uh, uh, we would uh, trade uh, lithographs and uh, we would get our uh, co little collections of the Mexican uh, 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 printer in uh, Mexico City that I uh, do well. Uh, we'd trade and our lithographs would get out into circulation that way. Uh, Percy and I traded. And so uh, there was this wonderful bonding of people uh, uh, in, in a very family-friendly kind of thing. Um, we, of course, there, there was uh, the Greek photographer, uh, whose name eludes me right now, the female photographer here. And uh, when I had to do the murals on the front of the Fine Arts Center, restore them, they were gone, frankly. There were little traces of pigment here and there. And I decided, uh, I'd just come back from leaving uh, uh, the, uh, leaving my last position in Missouri. And uh, uh, so I, we had a photograph, black and white, uh, that uh, the photograph showed the entire facade in black and white, no color, 
uh, it showed each panel the size of a postage stamp. And uh, we blew that up to about uh, five or seven. And on that basis, I was able to see uh, Mike's composition uh, following as strictly as I could his composition. Uh, I had to rethink the color. Uh, probably I used a little more variety of color than Mike did when he painted them. Uh, Mike was very fast. If you have to do a cartoon a day for a major newspaper, uh, it's almost a heart attack uh, kind of affair <laughs> to get it out at the proper time. And uh, uh, Mike to us was gone, so. Uh, yeah, right, okay. So anyway, that's, that's a little bit of the past of the... We have a gift for, for Eric. Uh, this is Natalie Brown. She's 12, and she has been a student of Bemis for about five years. She's also... Um, been a sort of a teaching assistant and helped out as well with some of our instructors. So this is a drawing that she created for Eric of Eric. And so she would like to present that to Eric. Okay. So, yeah. Feel to be a, a living treasure. <laughs> it's strange. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> it's out of this world. All I'm, you know, I don't feel that way. Each day uh, I wake and I say I have certain things to, to accomplish today, and I do it. That's great. Uh, that's great. Okay. You know, and and you've played such an important part in this institution. You know, you talk about doing those Boardman Robinson mural, yeah. those free, yeah. freezes outside. What was that like to have to go through and, and recover what had been so lost to time? Well, I had to get models and, and redo the whole thing, but according to his poses and according to his value, the dark and light value. But I had to reconstruct the color. And the way that I did it was that I painted the gray, matched the gray that's on this concrete. Right. And, uh, and uh, no black, and uh, no, using no black, and I took the colors from that. There was a lot of orange sand in this stuff, and I found out I'm coming up with a lot of orange in the, in the color scheme. So, wow. Anyway, that's the way you do it here. What would you, if you had to, in just a couple of sentences, tell people, you know, you talk, you compared this, the early Fine Arts Center, the, Bro the Broadmoor Art Academy, yes. to, to Eden. Yes. What, what was it like to be a student at that time with such a sense of possibility and also with us being at the center of so much of what was happening in art? Yes, it was. Uh, the only thing was that in New York already the abstract movement had moved in. And we were totally uh, ignorant of that. But we we were all trained. I was basically trained as a, as a representational painter. But when I went to Yale, uh, one of the good advantages was Joseph Albert uh, working under him. I had to work totally abstract. And I learned a great deal from him. Oh, I, uh, I am so glad you have been a living treasure for a long time. Okay. Yes, you finally got it really authorized. <laughs> right.